No sé, Real. Let us speak directly. Why does the Sanhedrin consider this man so dangerous that they send you yourself here to make sure that he's condemned? Perhaps for the same reasons as you, Procurator, if you knew him as well as we do, would also find him dangerous. So this is the beating that you take on social media, the platform that's designed that way. They surveil you, they they watch your every move, they they strip you naked. Has nobody entered Jerusalem as a king? Look at him now! <laughs> so he's a king! <laughs> the king of the Jews! <laughs> Man, we ought to dress him like a pig! Hey, give me a clue! <laughs> Don't use mine, use one so of those! Oh, wait, 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 here it is! <laughs> Come on! Here we are! Turn around! <laughs> Look at him! Hey! hey. So just like Daniel did, they gave him a purple robe and a gold chain around his neck, but he didn't, he wasn't asking for it, but they still declared it for him to have that as they put it around him. Hey, wait a minute! If he's a king, if he's a king, he needs a crown! Hey, Majesty! High and mighty Majesty! <laughs> oh, look at him! I have it! A king's crown! <laughs> look what he's got! He's got his crown! <laughs> you need a scepter! Majesty! A perfect fit, your Where's majesty! Where's your throne, eh? the king <laughs> type in hit che homo behold the man well what have you got to say for yourself now? Speak! And they, and, the, and they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And in the days of those kings, the great God of heaven uh, shall, uh, shall cut the stone from the quarry without hands, shall crush all these other kingdoms. It's a listen to the voice of God. You can't just 
go to a pastor or a rabbi or an imam or a guru and just get your you know get your guidance from you got to go to the source you got to go to the lord and he speaks to you through your circumstance many times i uh, i like in that story that elaine told me of the uh, the eagle in the nest and how an eagle built its nest with rock and sticks and stuff like that so that when the baby eagles i don't know what they call birdie birdies eagies i don't know what they're called but they're cute i have a, a bird a bird nest right next to my door again another robin's nest this time it's a lot like literally right outside my heart bush outside a, a bird a bird nest right next to my door again another robin's nest this time it's like literally right outside my heart bush outside my tree this one Funny how the bird knows how to like get some kind of sealant in there too, the waterproof. Nothing's in there though. It's empty. It's like an empty. There's nothing here. Come on. So this is another one of the hard bushes, and as you can see, right there's the door. Oh, and look what's right over here in the little nest. What do we got here? What do we got here? Right there. Aw. Hello. Hello, my beautiful friends. My three little birds at my doorstep. How beautiful are these guys, huh? So cute. Look at where they are in relation. Like, here you go. You walk. I'm like walking in and I'm like, hey, hey guys, what are you doing? For he has worked with God this day. So the people rescued Jonathan, and he did not die. Then Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their place. I love how they phrase that. For he has worked with God this day. It's a great thing to work with God. It's a great partnership. Find out where God is working and be his partner. Find out where God is fighting the battle and join the troops fight with God work with God don't ask God to work with you or fight with you your cause or this is a worthy cause you should get involved no you should get involved in his cause fight with God find out where God wants to work find out where God wants to fight and join that hard times. That's why, that's why the scriptures say that you should rejoice and you should thank God in your persecutions and your hardships and everything else because you know that it's creating in you something that your hard times can't even be compared to. The glory that's going to be revealed then, so much better. God speaks to pretty much everybody through their circumstance. He spoke to his prophets, to his, his, uh, his people. Right? Very important, I see but there's not much scriptural mention. So this will probably be one of the few teachings or one of my first teachings where I'm going to go into uncharted territory and I'm just going to throw you out my possibilities, but I'll also mention certainties as well. Well, Rock cons killed a construction worker in Little Blue Creek Clan Canyon the area of Highway 50 on Tuesday, prompting an emergency closure. Crews were able to reopen the work zone uh, to traffic on Tuesday evening. I was there at like 10 in the morning. Ricardo Batista, 69, of Florissant was killed instantly Florida. when a large rock fell on him. Join that. One of my favorite stories in all the scriptures in Joshua chapter 5, you know, I'll remind you, you know the story. Joshua is about to fight the Battle of Jericho, actually march around Jericho. He really didn't do much fighting, but he's the general. So right before what he thinks is the Battle of Jericho, he is alone and he sees a man with a drawn sword. Joshua looks at him and naturally the military impulse within him thinks, you know, friend or foe, you know, is this fight or flight? What am I going to do here? So he sees a man with a sword and he goes, he didn't recognize him. So he said, are you for us 
or are you for our adversaries? And the man with the drawn sword said, no. Which is an odd answer. Now the question is, are you for us or are you for our enemies? No. But he says, no, but as the commander of the Lord's armies, I have come. So what that means is, are you for He's a man on sword. But he says, no, but as the commander of the Lord's armies, I have come. Florissant was killed instantly when a large rock fell on him and crushed and killed him. Ricardo, dominant ruler, hard king. Florissant means to flourishing, like that which is flourishing. The other race has taken over the world. In the days of those kings, which is what's going on right now, the iron mixed with miry clay, which is the, the last race that's taking over. Just like Lady Gaga said, I myself am part of the manifestation and the, and the acknowledgement that this has come to that point in Daniel 12 right now. Great. The guy that got killed, his name means hard king. He was crushed in front of me. I, I documented it back then when I was leaving Grand Junction. I was like, man, this is this is insane. Wrong this question. Is absolutely. Are insane. you on God's side? I'm the commander of the Lord's hosts. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. You want to make sure you get on my side, our side, our side. So Joshua says, "What should I do?" Joshua first bowed down and worshipped. And then he said, what must I do? And the man with the drawn sword, whom I believe is a pre-incarnate apparition of Jesus in the Old Testament, said, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Holy ground. Holy ground. So, I love this wording. I love the wording of saying, for he, the Lord, worked, or for he, Jonathan, worked with God. He's on God's side, working as the Lord wanted him to do. Because remember, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, what restrains the Lord armor from saving bearer. by many or by few? Let's just go over and see if you and I can just take the whole army down, which they did, because they were fighting with God. So we're going to end this chapter and we're getting a good profile of this man, Saul. It ends, the name of Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimehaz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner. Uh, the son of Ner. Bags down. Think of it, we're in these earthly tents, we're sojourners. I said, no, I just set my bags down. And she goes, okay, well here, and then she goes, you're really gonna like this room. I was like, weird. The way she said it was so weird. So then she has me, so I go from 512, which is useless, uh, unprofitable, to 320. And uh, that's why I took a picture of me smiling like that's. And the Lord says, look up 320. Well, if you guys remember, 320 means. By the way, Robin, nerd. Yeah. All these people that have come against me, you know, I said they don't have very long left before their judgment comes. The ones that called me demonic and started channels, called themselves Rob and, uh, and all this other nonsense. They're about ready to meet the most horrifying fate they could even imagine. Let me pray. Be aware of holographic images, laser point sounds out of nowhere, 
frightening sounds and sights and those things that are coming that you you're going to see coming upon this earth is going to cause men's hearts to fail because of what they see like perceive they didn't actually see it they're not even going to see it but what they're perceiving that's going to be coming upon the earth is what will cause their heart to fail with fear and then right shortly after that okay so this is where we left off in a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on thee said the Lord thy Redeemer for this is as the waters of Noah unto me for I have sworn everybody said what was that swear a rainbow for as I have sworn the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth His kindness shall not depart from thee neither shall the covenant of my peace Casimir be removed say son of nerd but the son of Ner Saul's uncle Kish was the father of Saul and Ner the father of Abner was the son of Abiel now there was so we just see a man going downhill rather quickly now chapter 15 verse 1 Samuel also said to Saul the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people over Israel now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord God sent me to anoint you now obey him he's gonna give him an order and I'll explain the order but that's the preamble to the order. I've done what God called me to do. I've selected you as the king. You're the people's choice. But you need to remember that you have to obey, listen to and obey the voice of God. And he won't. He will say that he will, but he won't. Now, let me just set it up this way. You remember in the New Testament, Jesus gave a story a parable he said there was a certain man who had two sons this is found in matthew 21 a certain man had two sons and he told one of his sons go out and work in my vineyard and he said i will not but later he regretted it and he went out and he obeyed his father he didn't go jesus asked he said to his second son, go work in my vineyard. And he said, I go, sir. But he didn't go. Jesus asked the audience, which of the two sons did his father's will? That would be the one as of late, the one that asked him to remember him that day. And then he said he would be in paradise. So the one that didn't go at first the works weren't as good as they were in the end the first one said he won't go but he eventually did go the second one said sure i'll go dad i'll do it you can count on me but he disobeyed he didn't do it but he disobeyed he didn't do it it's a story of two sons two twins two of them one of them did one of them didn't we have two Saul's there's a Saul in the Old Testament there's a Saul in the New Testament the Saul in the Old Testament is like the son who says sure dad I'll go but he doesn't go the Saul in the New Testament resists Jesus call in his life at first but eventually is conformed and obeys Jesus that's Saul of Tarsus Paul the also as one person doing things the Old Testament way and then beginning on the New Testament starting to do it the spiritual way instead of the literal way as the same person going from Saul to the Apostle so and obeys Jesus that's Saul of Tarsus Paul the Apostle 
When Israel left Egypt on their way to the promised land, the Amalekites staged an unprovoked attack against those in the rear part of the children of Israel's ranks. Provoked attack against those in the rear part of the children of Israel's ranks, the rear ranks, where the older people were, where the slower and infirmed people were, so it attacked all the sick people, all the old people, and just killed them willy-nilly for no reason at all. Now this was a judgment of God. And people say, well, why would God do that? First, now this was, and Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, now remember Haman, later on in the book of Esther, is an Agagite, comes from this. It's just a hard name to say, Agag. But his name is not Agag. Agag is a title. Just like Pharaoh is a title of the leader of Egypt, or was, he disobeyed God. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. I really like Samuel. I really, I really can't wait to hang out with Samuel. That'd be pretty cool. Because I see in Samuel a man who, even though he told the people, look, don't, don't ask for a king, the Lord will be king. He gave in to the will of the people and brought in Saul. I believe even though Samuel knew that God's heart was to have a theocratic kingdom where God would rule over them, I believe he really truly in his heart wanted Saul to be a good king. He wanted him to succeed. It means recognition. It means a knowing again, owning, and it means the end. And it wasn't like, oh, what a shame. I mean, he really poured out his heart and cried over him. He cried out to God all night. When Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul went to Carmel. And indeed, he set up a monument for himself. I mentioned this last week. Now, Carmel, if you've been to Israel, you are thinking of Mount Carmel up in the north. This is not that Carmel. This is another place called Carmel, way down south in the desert, down in the Negev, down by Beersheba, down by Arad, and those desert I'm, enclaves. I start booking it, it back, Carmel, let's say. Because that's where the battle And then I, I, my, my maps kind of diverts me, and I end up going through a place called Four Corners, which was weird because that was part of the scripture I was reading. And from above, four corners makes a big X identical to my parachute. See In those desert enclaves, it was that Carmel because that's where the battle was taking place. So he's coming back up from that battle, stops at that place called Carmel, says, this is a nice place to make a statue of me. So that people will admire me because I'm so awesome. So he does. And Samuel went to Saul. Verse 13, Samuel went to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Did he obey the commandment? No, he disobeyed the commandment. But notice how spiritually he, he couches his words, his response to the prophet. Praise God, brother. God bless you. Thus making peace. The reason Jesus was crucified between two different thieves 
is a representation of you and your condition. Or that jewelry that will fall apart before it gets to the hotel. I got to do it. Saul's got a down pass. Praise well, you get God. To see it Bless from it the you, other Lord. Side. I've done all that God said. So Samuel screen, said, not okay. Not just receiving a if video from me. And you're here in person. Like, you know, Corey's gotten to experience a lot of this. It, uh, and people around me. When you see it happen live, it is mind destroying. It will literally take your breath away. It'll make you go have to lay down for half a day just to try and mentally process. Like Lou walking into this is it. Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. I like Samuel. You know, he's a man of God, and he does not have the fear of man. He fears only God. Didn't, he respects the king, but he's representing God, and so it's only right in representing a disobedient king to tell him, be quiet, button it, zip it, don't want to hear from you. Quit talking, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has, he also has rejected you from being king. Let this be a warning to all of us. Saul heard the word of the Lord. Saul knew exactly what God commanded. We know the word of the Lord. We know what is required of us from God. He heard, but he didn't mix it with true faith, and he didn't act in obedience. He couches it in spiritual talk. A lot of people do. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless God. They know all the Christian talk. I love The good news is all you have to do is make an attitude adjustment. It's not complicated. You can't change other people. God and I, man, we're like this. We're friends. And I've had people who want to talk about people they know or relatives who are living in disobedience, and they'll say, oh, but they love the Lord. Saul had all the right speech, but not the right lifestyle. You know... God is not impressed with pageantry. To obey is better than sacrifice. You know, God didn't go, oh, man, that, that worship service, that, that song in that, in that A minor key, that moved me. Oh, it is? I dig that. One. I love that. That one? Those people, man, they put on a good production. Don't they? He's not asking for perfection. He's asking for reality authenticity. 